Good evening and welcome to the new edition of Bahrain Today, which covers various topics, latest news and the events of the Kingdom. I'm Mohamed al sarraj and this is Bahrain Today. We have to admit, nothing compares with the simple pleasure of riding a bike. The cycling bees are a group of women who are cycling together regularly in a safe environment. Not only that, this activity also gives them an opportunity to exercise and socialize at the same time. Today, we are here with the founder of the Cycling Bees, Ms. Sara Sammak. Today we are doing a daytime cycle. We try to have it in a safe environment and that is why we always have it at Sheikh Nasser's Loop because we try to have it in an environment where it's carless and the beginners feel safe because there's no interactions with the cars and the cyclists. come to cycle or start cycling uh, just well initially is to get fit and lose weight out of the gym uh, because I got bored of year after year gym 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 and nothing happened um, what did I gain from it self-confident the weight loss and a social uh, social life with a lovely group of ladies For sure, you should try and give cycling a go. Um, and cycling this is the perfect place to start. Like, it's so inclusive, and there's girls from all walks of life. So much diversity, and everyone is welcome, from beginner to athlete. Um, for sure, get on your bike and feel the freedom. With us today is the founder, Ms. Sara Samak. Welcome, Sara. How are you doing today? Very good. How are you? All right. Did you uh, bike here or did you drive here? Uh, <laughs> we had a ride in the morning, but not, <laughs> not okay. now. <laughs> All right. So tell us a, a little bit more about the Cycling Bees. So Cycling Bees started when me and my partner, Dan Zabari, were cycling around the country training for Ironman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were uh, taking a lot of picture um, right. and you know, videos while like, you know, cycling. So we had a lot of interest like from girls, like, can we join, can we join, and can we join? Mm -hmm. And that's where we started. We started with five girls, and now, you know, our rides can go up to 40 girls. And like last week, we had like the Women Power Summit, and okay. we had 90 girls joining the ride. So. 90 girls? Yeah. Wow, where'd you get all these bikes from? Oh yeah, well. <laughs> So they had it over there, they can always hire as well. All right, so this is how it all started. Just uh, random videos, random cameras, yeah. and, and there all was around nothing, Bahrain. Yeah, and there was nothing for, uh, for girls. Right. Because if you see uh, like um, cycling in Bahrain, sta like, it started like, very nicely now because of Ironman. But uh, when I started 12 years ago, I was the only girl around the country. 12 years ago? 12 years ago, yes, almost, in Awali. So I used to cycle in Awali with a group of expats, and I can't like to you know, speak Arabic, so they can't tell that I'm local. Right. Um, it was very critical like for a girl to be on a bike, so that's why I did it between like a group of expats. Right. Um, then you know, I started racing, but you know, when I started racing, I had to race with the boys, obviously, and that's when we started training. Yeah. But after that, when I started you know, training with Dana for Ireland, Man, I told her, listen, there's nothing for girls, and she was like, yeah, because you know you you don't you don't find a lot of girls on bikes. So I was like, you know what, we should limit this group for girls only because wow. it will feel more comfortable. So it kind of did contribute into the growth of women um, in the in, in in sports in cycling, yeah. and uh, now you're more you you said Ironman. So um, the, you didn't join Ironman obviously 12 years ago, but now you yeah. started and more and more people are getting into these kind of sports and uh, 
Yeah, so our aim is like to empower more women to ride yeah. bicycles. Amazing. So um, to encourage them, we can always do like, you know, um, different rides and different like what Dinah was t uh, saying in the film that, you know, we've got beginner ride rides where it's in oh. a traffic free environment. We've got that like a little bit of exposure of cars, which is on Wednesdays. And then we have the Friday early morning, which is the more, you know, the, the most fun nice. part of the rides where you can actually start early morning, go for right. a coffee stop, carrick stop, as we say. Carrick spot. <laughs> spot. You know, you have to drink carrick, man. <laughs> right. Speaking of which, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about the safety procedures? So, yeah, um, uh, obviously if you ride in, in the evenings, we always require like you have to have your life. Rides, no mm. helmet, no rides, and we have our own escort car behind us oh, wow. because you know um, it's better if you have something at the back to protect the group. Right. And if someone gets tired, they can always jump in the car, and you know we just you know throw them in the in the top and beginning of the you know the road, and they can pedal faster. Right on, on right there, yeah. on. Sounds good. And uh, what 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 um, plans they have in the future? So um, we're, uh, what's happening, yeah, so we've got the Cycling Bees home where we're trying to encourage more women to come and ride um, right. bikes and train um, because a lot of women feel guilty like, you know, um, leaving the kids behind. So of this course. is like providing them a nice environment where they can actually train and, you know, have the kids um, play around and the kids can see their parents there um, so they oh. don't feel like, oh, they're left behind. Uh -huh. So that's one of the things that we've started uh, doing it and we're trying to um, um, work it out and promote it more mm -hmm. so we've got more girls joining it right um, we're like you know trying to because we the, the way we cycle in cycling bees is different than the competitive cyclists we right. actually ride between the villages we've we've been everywhere I was just about to ask where because you mentioned Awali yeah and I thought maybe you always go to Awali no. not, not really huh no we've, we've been like in Rifa we've been in Hamala, Jatra, Badaya, um, Harak, Arad, uh, you name cool. it Oh. Um, I like personally been even me not send my on a bike so uh, you name it we've been uh, all, right. it's all like on bikes and that's what a lot of people like it because you actually discover Bahrain in a different way obviously uh, driving a car is different than riding a bike because you pay Definitely. attention to little details exactly. around and we always find a nice spot to take a picture uh -huh. so the girls will be like how did you find this it's exactly. like well <laughs> <laughs> cycling so that's what we do we you know we make we try to make it as exciting as entertaining as mm -hmm. possible that's why we do um stops we do food stops obviously stop, you know, <laughs> uh, picture stops you know all of that and you right. know um they get motivated so like by the end of the day they get very happy to see how much mileage you've do they've done Definitely. like i had a girl who joined us for the first time and she did only compound riding and you know she was like panicking it's like yeah. my husband is on the phone with me because he knows that within half an hour i'll give him a call to yeah. have a left but and then and then no she actually finished the ride we cycled all the way from Badea to um malkia beach and we came back oh. and, and you how, know, I, how, how long was that that was around 35k so from three to 25 yes oh my yeah so i got the screenshot i was like huh. Huh, go send it to your husband it. prove it <laughs> that, you know you're wrong he's wrong you can actually that do it cool now that's women empowerment you know they feel safe they're all women and all of that oh man <laughs> yeah. sounds good well sarah this is it for the day yeah thank you thank you very much thank you it was so much fun having you. you i look forward to hear more from you yeah and i might see you around yeah you no, never on know. a bike or on, on a bike girls. hopefully <laughs> i don't have a bike yet but one day okay. <laughs> i gotta invest in one i'll ask you which one, which bike i should get <laughs> thank sure. you thanks a lot for your time <laughs> appreciate it Cheers. thank you for your time thank you I guess now it's my turn. Welcome to the entertainment pop culture segment happening here with your host, Bara Abdullah. We'll be talking about video games, movies, TV series, Netflix, everything that is fun and happening here in Bahrain. Speaking of movies, well, have you seen The Joker? If you did, good job. If you didn't, what are you waiting for? Check it out. So, to take a little bit about what's happening with the movie Joker, here's a trailer, all thanks to Warner Brothers Middle East. Let's have a watch with the trailer of the movie, The Joker. Please stop bothering my kid. Sorry. Arthur, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> this is the last time we'll be meeting. 
You don't listen, do you? You just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? And finally, in a world where everyone thinks they can do my job, check out this guy. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. It's so awful, isn't it? For my whole life, I didn't know if I even really existed. But I do. And people are starting to notice. Is this a joke to you? Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? You have seen it right now, the trailer of the movie The Joker with the main actor Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips. So, I actually had the chance to go to see the movie at the premiere at Sinopolis. Special thanks goes to Sinopolis Cinema in collaboration with Warner Brothers Middle East, inviting me and a lot of people to the cinema hall happening at the Sinopolis Theater. So, let's go to the premiere right now. Bahrain's very own Sinopolis Cinema hosted the movie premiere of the movie Joker in collaboration with Warner Brothers M.E. Movie lovers and renowned Bahrain movie critics were there to witness the opening of the amazing masterpiece of the movie Joker on our beautiful island. Our reporter Bara Abdullah got the chance to be there. Let's see who said what about the movie and their expectations before going in. Hello there, I am here at Sinopolis Gulf for the movie premiere of The Joker by Joaquin Phoenix. So, as you can see, a lot of people are here for the premiere, so I'm going to interview some of the guys who are excited to watch the movie here of The Joker, Sinopolis. Let's take a look. A lot of people have been comparing this movie to Scorsese's King of Comedy, which is a film that I really enjoy. And I, I like the comparisons. Like the one thing that would have me question the movie is the director Todd Phillips, only because he's never been known as a drama director. Um, he's more into you know, comedy, lowbrow stuff like The Hangover, Road Trip, and whatnot. But I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm excited. I mean, it won the top prize in Venice Film Festival, so it has to be something good. So I'm looking forward for this film and um, it's about time that we have a backstory for a Joker film. So understanding the character itself and why he became like that is, is something I look forward to see. Basically with this movie, they, they, the story is not based from the comics. They took certain elements from the comics, but I feel this movie reminds me of um, a movie that was uh, basically released in the 80s called The King of Comedy for Martin Scorsese and starring um, Robert De Niro. So I feel it has certain elements from that movie, but at the same time, we're gonna get something very demented and very twisted. Yeah. Some people are saying it's a prequel. Some people are saying that it exists in a movie that's suspended from the rest of the DC universe. Uh, some people even say it's in a universe that doesn't even include Batman, it's just Joker. Um, so whatever it is, I think this could be the step in the right direction for DC, since they've have been struggling to establish their f cinematic universe for a while. Um, especially since they've been playing catch up with Marvel. Yeah. It's very hard to do so because those guys have, uh, what, eight years ahead of them of establishment? Ultimately, I think um, what the trailer showed is that the society kind of made him this way. Um, and what I'm uh, expecting to walk out of the film is understanding why the character turned out to be the way he is. 
Um, and I think ultimately with the backstory that they're going to give us, uh, we're going to appreciate and sort of have some sort of empathy towards the Joker. Well, we live in an age where, where audiences are very smart. So they want something realistic and convincing. So people will not buy like before, like when someone wakes up from bed and, and says, hey, I'm a villain today, I'm going to kill everyone. No, we want certain, certain steps and certain dark stuff that happened to that character that took them to that path. Because we live in an age where people want to know everything, not like before. So I like that kind of approach. It's very realistic. So, but I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. After Heath Ledger, I was looking forward to someone to kind of like top that scale of acting. So Glaucon Phoenix, um, I'm assuming he's going to do something similar. I mean, we kind of, I don't know yet, but um, that's one of them. The acting of the Joker, who's going to carry that legacy from Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger. Um, so that I was looking forward to. And Top Phillips, you know, this is his first, uh, I would say, serious movie. He did a lot of comedic uh, direct, like he did The Hangover, but, uh, but you know, it's interesting to kind of switch careers and do something like serious like The Joker and a uh, standalone film for a villain. So that's that's uh, something I look forward to. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I'm expecting is just to be, it's going to be the, the twisted masterpiece. I want like a big twist at the end that will make me think, Wow, I did not see that one coming. That one I want in that film. Yeah. Well, who's your favorite? Uh, Mark Hamill from the animated series. Okay, go for it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, that sounds more like Chucky. So, there is no movie premiere without the presence of Hassan Darwish. Pretty much the event goer everywhere here in Bahrain and even to movie premieres. We are done with the movie, guys. We've seen the Joker. I won't say anything. I'll leave Hussein to do all the talking right now. Well, if you're not going to talk, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm literally speechless. <laughs> you can see his smile and all that. It's like, don't forget the smile. Hashtag smile. <laughs> Hashtag that. So, so the Joker pretty much just gave us like an interesting take of the reality of the world, right? Yeah. Um, it was a bit, you know, when they said Joker, I really thought Batman, but you know, it was more realistic than, you know, all the superhero movies and such. Yeah, so it's a really good movie. I, I do recommend it to all of you guys. All right, guys, as recommended by Hassan Darwish, right here at the movie premiere of The Joker, special shot at Ghost of Sinopolis. And thank you so much for Bahrain today, Bara Abdullah. So guys, you've seen it right now. Sinopolis, thank you so much for the invitation. And of course, big shout out goes to Warner Brothers Middle East. We're not done yet. Actually, we got an interview for you guys with the director of the movie, Todd Phillips. All thanks to Warner Brothers Middle East. So let's see what Todd Phillips has to say about his own movie with the Joker. Let's have a watch. It was surreal and um, it was quite an honor to be here. So, um, and the response was fantastic. Uh, so yeah, it kind of went perfect. It was. It was a dream night. That's what made it fun, is, is the ability to kind of um, take something that really has no particular backstory and um, just, it was very liberating. There were no rules and we just kind of did what we wanted and certain things we kind of backwards engineered into, you know, why he is certain ways and other things we just made up out of the blue. And you're right, you know, not only is the story have an unreliable narrator, but it's Joker, so, you know, it's almost an unreliable, unreliable narrator. We meet a guy who is, um, you know, someone who has been told his whole life that his purpose is to bring laughter and joy to the world, and he believes it, um, and he um, sees himself as this um, put-upon sweet soul in a city full of harsh people. To me, Joaquin is just one of the greats, and he take something on the page. It's hard to explain to people, you know, what an actor brings to a role. You know, you, you might see it and think everything in there was written down for him to do, and it's just not that way ever. And Joaquin is, is one of those guys who just takes it and makes it his own in a very specific 
way that you would have never guessed. This is my first time with Joaquin, um, and it was intimidating at first because I hold him in a special place, uh, but I quickly got over that and we, we got along really well, and I think um, it was a very intense collaboration. Robert De Niro uh, plays a, a guy who's been on, on the same talk show probably for 30 or 35 years. His name's Murray Franklin. Um, he's a, a kind of typical American talk show host. Um, a little bit vapid and a little bit shallow and just sort of there every night to make an audience laugh. And Arthur, who's somebody who has uh, severe father issues, um, meaning he's always looking oh, for, for a father figure, really sees Murray as that. Zazie um, and Francis Conroy, Francis Conroy, who's just uh, plays his mom um, uh, and I think is just so beautiful and simple in, in what we needed her to do. Uh, and Zazie, who, who plays somebody that Arthur knows and has a relationship with, so to speak. Well, one of the fun things about doing these kind of movies is, again, the interpretation, like taking something that people know and, and putting your own spin on it. So for us, Gotham wanted to feel as real as possible and um, uh, the movie in general, we kind of ran everything through a very realistic lens. So it's a, it's a broken down city of, 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 it's a city of broken dreams, let's say that. And uh, it's on its last legs, you know, and um, we wanted that to kind of, the film to, to feel like that. And movies are a giant collaboration. It's obviously not just the actors, but the cinematographers. Uh, which, which is a guy I've worked with for six or seven movies now, Lawrence Scher. Mark Friedberg is the production designer. He grew up in New York in the, in the 70s and 80s, and that was where we were kind of paying homage to. So he had old photos, and you know we would go through things and talking about the look. So yeah, we had an amazing team on this film. I think directors have a lot of tools with which they paint a picture, and, and music has always been a, a, a huge one for me. Hildur Gudenitor, um, this Icelandic composer, she lives in Berlin now, but she's from Iceland. Uh, I had contacted her early on in putting the movie together and asked her to start writing music just based off the script, and uh, she just started sending me music based off of scenes she read. The score is a huge part of the movie, as you know, and I thought she did a really beautiful and unique job. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it yourself with Todd Phillips talking about his own movie, The Joker. A lot of good insights happening here. Todd Phillips done. Now let's see what happens with Joaquin Phoenix. What do you have to say about his act as the Joker in the movie itself? Let's have a watch with Joaquin Phoenix. I thought it was very smart. Um, it's really unique. It was like nothing I'd ever read before. And I thought that there were still elements from the kind of DC canon of Batman. There were still references to that world and yet it also felt like it was something that was brand new and, and stood on its own. It was irreverent and, and funny and twisted. Um, it was it's just, it was a brilliant script. You never know if what he's saying is real. Um, but the, the thing is, I, I didn't think about it saying this may not be real. I'd say whatever he's saying, it's very real to him. Now, whether it is objectively real, it's, that's questionable. But for him, it always felt real. So I felt like I, I had to approach it sincerely every time, whatever the scene was. Um, but it's really left up to you, to the audience, to decide what you think is real or isn't. Todd has this great um, confidence and and your reverence. I mean, I, I feel so fortunate to have worked with him on this movie. Um, so he really gave me the confidence to to just be willing to discover something in the moment. Um, and I think that spontaneity was probably really important for this character. It just gives it kind of this kinetic energy. What I like about this movie is I think that there are several different reactions that people can have and they're all valid. And there's something really exciting about being in a movie that requires the audience to participate with the character in a different way. I mean, usually characters' motivations are so clearly defined that we're, we're telling the audience precisely what to feel and when. 
And what I like about this movie is it, it, it's really up to interpretation. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Joaquin Phoenix along with Todd Phillips. You've seen the premiere, you've seen the trailer, and now it's your turn to see the movie. <laughs> Say that again, pal.